Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lee Wang Jun. I'm the chairman of the Myeongji Hospital and the general secretary of Korea Hospital Association COVID-19 Emergency Response Committee. Currently, the whole world is trying to fight and overcome the COVID-19 pandemic by mobilizing all of its human and other resources. So, sharing our experience will be mutually beneficial to each other. For today's video, I would like to explain four key strategies how South Korea has operated successfully in response to COVID-19. Also, I will introduce Myeongji Hospital's initiatives how to fight against this novel coronavirus. First of all, I will introduce the epidemiological situation in Korea. In Korea, the first confirmed case of COVID-19 was reported on January 20, 2020. This bar chart shows the trend to April 6. The number of total confirmed patients totals 10,284. Among them, 6,598 were discharged after recovery and 186 died. Up to this point, the percentage of the patients who were fully recovered is around 64% and the mortality rate is 1.8%. This is the chart that shows the epidemiologic curve in Korea. The following are the two epidemic curves that represent the two different ways of COVID-19 spreading. The green curve illustrates Daegu and North Gyeongsang province area, where the primary outbreak happened due to a new Christian sect called the Shincheonji Church. This accounts for more than 50.4% of the total confirmed cases. The red curve displays the Seoul metro region, which also includes the Incheon city and Gyeonggi province. Next, we are going to look at the epidemiological characteristics in Korea. The epidemiological characteristics in Korea were very distinctive and different from those in China. In Korea, more women than men were affected with COVID-19, and the largest affected group is people in their 20s. This statistic is very unique and is due to the Shincheonji group. Most of the 20s were the worshippers of this church. Besides the Shincheonji group, South Korea also witnessed that fatality increases with the people in older age, similar to the epidemiological characteristics in China. Based on the updated information, the mortality rate is around 19.78% for people in their 80s. The geographical epidemiology of COVID-19 is as shown on the screen. As you can see, the main place infected with COVID-19 is the Daegu and North Gyeongsang area. From now on, I would like to introduce the four strategies that the Korean government and people have undertaken to fight against COVID-19. The first strategy is transparency and openness in communication. Not only the Korean government and the Korean Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, KCDC, but also all the media and institutional stakeholders simultaneously share all the information about COVID-19. Moreover, KCDC Daily provides the public with all the updated information about the number of confirmed patients and their moving lines. For that reason, we had more control over the situation instead of being mired in confusion and doubts. Unlike the MERS outbreak that happened in Korea in 2015, we were able to take steps immediately against the COVID-19 outbreak. That is, the very dramatic change of the government, as well as the public, which minimized the casualties. Also, the Korean government did not close down any cities, even during the period when Daegu and North Gyeongsang area was at the peak of the outbreak. We did not lock down any airports, either. The international entry has been opened from the beginning of the outbreak till now. Moreover, Korea simultaneously followed two-track strategies, the containment policy, and the mitigation policy. We have started the containment policy just after the first infection in China last December to isolate the patients who showed positive and to prevent any secondary and tertiary transmission. Mitigation policy, also known as social distancing, was introduced to alleviate the peak of outbreak and contain it within our capacity. Right after the outbreak at Daegu and North Gyeongsang area, the Korean government started the social distancing campaign and decided to close all the schools, recommended to avoid any gatherings and work from home, and so on. And all these policies were voluntarily followed by citizens rather than by a forceful or suppressive manner. The third strategy is the triage and treatment system. 
As you know, the biggest challenge in the outbreak is the overflow of the patients and the number of patients exceeding the capacity of hospital beds. To solve the problem, the Korean government focuses on inventing the new triage system. For the 80% of the patients who are in mild to moderate status are sent to special facilities, the so-called community treatment centers. We modified corporate training centers, dormitories, or resort hotels to temporary isolation treatment facilities. Doctors and nurses were dispatched to these facilities to monitor isolated patients four times a day. Lately, we prepared 5,000 beds for these community treatment centers. And the second tier of the triage is the public community hospitals. We emptied these public community hospitals to receive COVID-19 patients, especially moderate to severe status patients, up to 1,000 beds. And the third tier of the triage is the 29 national designated hospitals for infectious disease equipped with negative pressure isolated units. The other 30 tertiary care hospitals joined to receive critical patients. We have prepared around 500 negative pressure isolated units for critical care. The last and fourth strategy is extensive screening and fast tracking. In the battle with COVID-19 until now, the only weapon has been the diagnostic kits because we have no therapeutic drugs or vaccines so far. KCDC and Korean biotech companies shared information and developed test kits. These medical kits have been widely available since early February. The second point of extensive screening is to maximize the number of people tested with increasing efficiency. To ensure that, Korea developed drive through and walk through test centers as the fast and quick way to detect COVID-19. Last but not least, the third point is to utilize laboratory capacity. Aside from KCDC laboratories, Korea has more than 100 hospital labs, as well as commercial labs working around the clock to test the samples. All in all, the daily testing capacity is around 20,000 samples. As such, preemptive and quick diagnosis testing was crucial in Korea to minimize the COVID-19 casualties and death rate. From now on, I want to introduce how Myeongji Hospital has been responding to this shocking virus, COVID-19. The Korean government has designated Myeongji Hospital as a control hospital for infectious diseases and disasters since 2014. We established 12 negative pressure isolated units. Among them, 5 units are in ICU, 3 units are in the emergency center, and 4 units are in the general ward. We started to prepare for this COVID-19 pandemic right after the first patient was reported in China. Since the third patient with COVID-19 in Korea was transferred to our hospital, we started the big battle, not against the virus itself, but the fear and phobia about COVID-19. To maintain the hospital's capacity and control, Myeongji Hospital started two tiers of separate screening centers. One is called the Emergency Department-Based Screening Center, which is focusing more on the high-risk group. Here, we try to isolate the patients immediately who are highly suspicious or take PCR samples for symptomatic patients. The other screening center is based on the outpatient department, which is more oriented to simple flu-like illness. This is a type of fever and respiratory symptom specialized clinic. After a consultation, some of the patients take the PCR test. This building, also known as Block E, is very specially designed for emergency care and infection control. The first floor is the emergency center with three negative pressure isolation units and screening centers. And E2, the second floor, and E5, the fifth floor, are all designated for caring for COVID-19 patients. And we changed General Ward E3 into PSU, Pneumonia Surveillance Unit, only to concentrate on the pneumonia patients. Also, we modified another General Ward, E4, to ASU, Admission Screening Unit. We wanted to make sure to check every single hospitalized patient by PCR test before their admission. Only after we confirm the negative results can the patients be moved to the general ward. Already, the whole 10 weeks have passed since we have fought against COVID-19. We have now treated around 34 confirmed patients. Aside from treating patients, we have done many things to overcome this situation, and I would like to share four more things. First is our case report of patient number three, who was the first case caused tertiary transmission outside of China. You can find it on JKMS, Journal of Korean Medical Science. The second is the COVID-19 RT-PCR diagnostic kit that we developed in partnership with biotech company CancerRope, a subsidiary of Myeongji Hospital. We have obtained the Korean FDA's approval for export and are submitting U.S. FDA's emergency use approval. The third one is that we are collaborating with a company specializing in AI solution to diagnose COVID-19 using chest CT. 
The last one is psychological support for the patients. As you know, the isolated situation itself is very desperate and deteriorative. Most patients need both psychiatric consulting and psychological help. That is why we organize the bedside concert to support the patients hosted by our Art Healing Center. You can also watch video clips on YouTube. So this is how Korea and Myeongji Hospital have been dealing with COVID-19. People all over the world are fighting against this unpredicted infectious disease. To defeat this invisible enemy, we should cooperate and collaborate in global solidarity. Surely I believe we will win together eventually. Thank you.